Hi everyone, Anthony Morikati here. I love taking photos at night, but I found that at times it could be rather tricky editing a night image. In today's video, I want to give you some tips and recommendations when editing night photos in Luminar Neo. But very quickly before I begin, I want to mention that the fine folks over at Skylum Software gave me a 30% off discount code or promo code to share with everyone. This promo code is good on everything they sell, including Luminar Neo. So if you need anything from Skylum Software, in the description below this video, I'll have that promo code listed. One thing of note, this promo code is only going to work for four days from today. Today is August 10th, 2023. Now, you can see I have Luminar Neo open. Now, I'm not going to go through the problem of, or the trouble of importing images into Luminar Neo. I'm just going to do a single image edit. To do that, go up to File, and then down to Edit Single Image. And on my desktop, I have a Nikon RAW file. We'll open that up. This is a photo I took several years ago. I had the opportunity to get on the roof of the tallest building in Buffalo. The problem was, I think this was January. It was around 12 degrees. It was very windy. Also, uh, the roof had this wall that went around it that was about shoulder height and about three and a half feet thick, um, obviously, so people don't get blown off the roof or accidentally walk off the roof. So it was ch a challenge. I had to put my tripod as high as it would go, which is around seven and a half feet. And even then you could see I have part of the roof or this wall in the shot. Um, also, I wasn't very careful. It's like super crooked. So there's a lot wrong with this image. We need to fix it. The framing is bad. Just about everything that could go wrong, I did wrong with this shot. So we're going to jump right over to the edit panel. Now, the first thing I recommend you do on an image is remove noise. Do it as early in your workflow as possible. That way, the noise reduction is the most effective. Uh, if you wait and do it later, after you do a lot of tone and contrast and sharpening and stuff like that, uh, the noise is more difficult to get rid of. So if you could do it first, do it first. Now, I happen to have the noiseless AI, or as it says here, the noiseless raw extension. If you don't have it, you're going to have to use denoise. Either way, remove noise now. So I'm going to go to noiseless raw. It's recommending the low adjustment. And I'll click on low. You can see it has this geometric pattern that pops up as it's examining the image and determining how to remove the noise. And once it does remove the noise, that geometric pattern will disappear and it will zoom in and it will show us, hey, the noise is removed. And there wasn't a lot of noise in this image or anyway. I mean, it was shot at ISO 400. I did have my camera on a tripod, but there is still a lot of noise issues when you have darker shots, which happens when you take images at night. So definitely remove the noise early in your workflow, first thing if possible. All right, so we got that done. Now, the next thing I recommend you do is crop and straighten if your image needs to be cropped and straightened. It's best to edit an image as you're looking at it and you're looking at the actual image, not looking at a lot of pixels that are going to be cropped away uh, later. So at this point, crop, and in this is my case, straighten. So I'm going to go to the crop AI tool and I'm going to go right here to horizontal alignment. I'll click that and straighten it. Okay, it's straight. Now I always try composition AI. It uses AI to determine the best crop for a scene, um, but I'll click on it. What I found, it almost never gives me a crop that I like, at least. So um, it just basically cropped in a touch, but it still has part of this wall in the shot. I want to crop that totally away. And also the sky is boring. There's really not much there, a couple little clouds. So I don't need all those kind of boring pixels in the shot. So I'm going to get rid of those as well. So I'm going to just pull up from the bottom. I'm going to keep the original ratio. You can see this drop down here. The ratio was three to two. And then I'll go to the top and I'll pull this down. And then I want, this is Buffalo City Hall. I want this right on the rule of thirds vertical line on the right. So I'll just pull it that way. Then I'll look on the left to make sure that I'm not cropping out something that needs to be in the shot. And I'll look on the right for the same thing. And it looks pretty good. So I like this crop. We'll click apply. And you can see it takes a second and it applies the crop. Now that it's a lot tighter, looks a lot better. Now at this point, you may be tempted because super sharp AI is right below noiseless raw. You may be tempted to do that next. Don't. The reason why you don't want to do that is because you'll lose the develop raw tool. It will just become a develop tool. And develop raw is more powerful than the normal just develop tool. So you don't want to do any super sharp AI now. Now, 
what I do is tone. I recommend you do that next, tone and color. So you go to the develop tool. Often when you take photos at night, the white balance will be off if you shot auto white balance in your camera. And you can see this, the white balance just looks odd on this image. And the problem you'll often have when you take like big wide shots of cities is the city has a lot of different color temperature street lights. They use like quartz lights and sodium vapor lights and they use LED lights. LEDs tend to be like um, bluish and I think quartz are more yellow and sodium vapor are more orange. So you get all these different kind of colors and it's difficult for the white balance to nail, to get nailed in camera. It's difficult to do it in post as well. So I'm going to jump right down to color. And what I'm going to do, what I recommend you do is go to this drop down and just try tungsten. Often that will get you pretty close. And you can see that tungsten is okay, but I think it's just a little bit too blue. You can see that some of these headlights of the cars just have a tinge of blue in there. I don't like. So I'm going to go to the temperature slider and just work off this tungsten white balance preset. And just move this to the right just a little bit. Try to pull some of that blue away. And there's still a lot of yellows and stuff, but I mean, it's, it is what it is. That's the way the scene was. So that's okay. I think I'm done with the white balance adjustment. Now I'm going to edit tone. Now there's a couple different ways I could go with this. Um, let me put on the clipping indicator. So I'm going to hit the J key on my keyboard and you'll see when I hit the J key, there's a lot of red being overlaid on the image. You could see like here, this is County Hall, old County Hall specifically is what they call that building. And you can see that there's a lot of red there. There's red on the snow out here. Hit the J key again. You can see that red overlay goes away. That red overlay means that we're clipping the highlights. Uh, typically, I don't like to clip highlights, but this was a difficult scene to photograph. There was a lot of dynamic range in this scene. There were a lot of very dark areas, a lot of very bright areas with all those lights. So the camera's uh, exposure latitude wasn't really able to capture the entire dynamic range. So we had these clipped highlights. Now, what I can do, one way I could go with this, is I could accept or just think in my mind, I'm going to have a darker image. So I'm going to go to exposure. First, I'd probably go to highlights, pull that all the way down. You can see we're still clipping some of the highlights. Then I'll go to exposure and pull that down. Tall, that red overlay is gone. And this looks decent, but I don't really want a darker image. So I'm going to reset these. I'm going to just double click on exposure to reset that slider, double click on highlights to reset that slider. So I don't really want that. I'm going to accept the fact that I'm going to have some of the highlights blown out just the way it's going to be. So what I am going to do though, is I'm going to take highlights all the way down, but I'm not going to touch exposure. I don't want the darker image. I want it just to be a little brighter. And then what I'm going to do is I'll go to shadows and open those up even more. So we're seeing a little more detail into the city. Then I'll go to blacks and whites. And then what I'll do here is I'll take the black slider and I'll move this to left just to bring the darkest areas a little darker, just to give a little, the image a little more contrast. And I'll go to whites, and I'm just going to eke that up just a tiny bit. Tiny bit. Yeah, it looks now. We still have those clipping indicators on. See, though, I don't have, like, vast expanses of the image being blown out. Just patches on the snow, patches over here and snow on the side of the road, patches on Old County Hall, and patches on this building back here. So nothing, like, too big. Nothing too big to worry about. So I'm going to hit the J key again to turn off those clipping indicators. And I think my tone adjustment is done. Now, often after adjusting tone, you may find that you'll have to go back and readjust your white balance. I don't think I need to here. I'm not going to do anything with saturation or vibrance. Often when you shoot at night, your colors get up subdued anyway. And if you do want kind of a false color look, then you may want to put boost saturation and or vibrance. But in this case, I want to keep it a little more true to life, so I'm not going to touch either of those sliders. What I am going to do, though, is we're going to jump down to noise reduction. Or not noise reduction, I'm sorry, optics. And then we're going to click all three of these boxes, just let it auto defringe, auto fix chromatic aberration, and auto distortion corrections. You can see that took care of that. Now, one thing that is bothering me about this, if you look very closely at these buildings, they're leaning, leaning to the right. It's because I shot very wide, and I had the camera tilted down. Often if you use a wide angle lens and you tilt the camera up or down, especially against tall buildings, um, you'll get this buildings falling backwards or falling to the side. In this case, they're falling to the right. So I want to fix that. I'm going to go to the transform tool. I'm going to go to the vertical slider. And I'm just going to tweak this to the right a little bit. 
and it takes a second to render. This tool uses a lot of computing power, you know, specifically your graphics card, so it may take a while to render. But it looks pretty good now. You could see like the corner of this building, which should be a perfect vertical, is now pretty much a perfect vertical in the image. So it looks pretty good. I think everything's now straight up. Of course, you lose a lot of pixels. It zoomed in a little bit more when it did that. But that's okay. I think it looks good now compared to what it was. So I'm good there. Now, look at it. Do I want to make any further adjustments in this develop raw um, adjustment tab? Because as I mentioned, once I send it over into Super Sharp AI, this will move over to the edits panel. Now, there's no problem with that. You always could go over to the edits panel and access your adjustments and readjust them. The problem is Super Sharp AI takes a very long time to do. It uses a lot of computing power, and on my computer on an image like this, it's probably going to take a good minute. What happens is when you do it then, and then you go back to edits, and you go down to develop raw in edits and readjust anything, what happens though, as soon as you open this up, develop raw in edits, it will remove the super sharp sharpening. So you come in and you readjust things here, close this down, then go back to tools. What happens though, the super sharp isn't applied. It takes a whole nother minute to get applied. So it kind of will slow down your workflow. So at this point, I want to be very careful that I do in fact have my adjustments nailed with this develop raw because I know I'm going to use super sharp AI next. I'm just, you know what? I'm just going to take the exposure up just to, yeah, that looks all right. So I think I'm done with the develop raw. So now we'll go to super sharp AI and I'm just going to go to middle. Now I mentioned that this takes a while, probably about a minute on my computer. You get those geometric lines like we uh, got when we were using noiseless AI. You'll notice down here develop, it doesn't say develop raw anymore. So that's gone. That's over here in edits. So we just have a develop uh, tool here now. But anyway, I'll let it do its thing and I'll just speed this up so that you don't have to sit here the entire time. Okay, it is done. Now let's do a before after. I'll click on this eyeball. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. You can see it did subtle sharpening, but I think it looks great. Again, there's before and there's after. Now again, I'm going to close this down. You notice the develop tool now doesn't say develop raw anymore and that all the adjustments are zeroed out. If I need to readjust any of my adjustments, I have to jump over to edits. When I do that, you'll find develop raws here. But if I open this right now, it's going to remove the noise as I do these adjustments. Then when I come back over to tools, it has to reapply that noise and it won't have the geometric pattern to let you know it's doing it. It will just be a image that hasn't been sharpened yet. And it, you'll fans on your computer will kick on and you're wondering what's happening as you're trying to do edits. Everything's going to lag and go very slowly. That's because it's doing that sharpening all over again. Um, so again, try to do all your develop raw adjustments before you use super sharp AI at all. So I like this. Now I'm going to jump down to magic light. That's another extension. And I'm going to go to intensity and move this up. And what you'll find is once we do that is anything that's a pointed light source, not a lot here, but there is this like window here you'll get this kind of star pattern. See that? Kind of like that. Go size, you can mess around with it. Now there's, you would think there's a lot of star pointed light sources here, but there really isn't apparently. Well, we could try that. I kind of like that. So you could do that, especially with light images. Magic light is a great extension to have because it really does like as though you were uh, really closing down the aperture on your lens. And some lenses uh, give a more pleasing star look when you close down the aperture than other lenses. So you always get it perfect though when you use magic light. So I'm going to do that and I'm pretty much done. I think I'm going to go down to the vignette and I'm going to give it a darker vignette, something like that. Try to draw everyone's eye more towards the middle of the image. There's not much all. A lot of people like to add glow uh, to a night image, like something like that. If you're into that, by all means, do that. Personally, I don't think I want to do that. Or maybe I do. No, I don't. There's without the glow. And there's with some glow. Let it render. Actually, that doesn't look too bad, to tell you the truth. 
What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I'm going to leave it just for fun of it. And uh, that's it. I'm done. There is my edited night photo in Luminar Neo. Hopefully those few tips I gave you, like the order of events, when to do things, when not to do things, uh, that helps you and it helps you get a better uh, edit for any night images you may be editing. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.